Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Starter Set Extremis, this big box here, uh, to learn how to play Age of Sigmar 3rd uh, Edition for Warhammer. First, we're going to get into what we have inside the box, and then after that, we will check out how one can use it, no matter the models that you have. <laughs> This box includes an 80-page Extremist Edition starter set book that has five missions inside to show you how to play Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition, a 56-page core rule book that has all the rules that you need to play Age of Sigmar inside, excluding battle plans and uh, tournament-specific rules, some Citadel scenery pieces, five of them, which are very nice. They are not pre-assembled, you have to assemble all of it, of course, and a two-sided game board, a dark swampy style game board, and then a reddish um, Martian kind of Deadlands game board. Ten six-sided dice, two range rulers of 12 inches, two reference sheets, which I very much like, Six war school cards and two allegiance abilities for the various citadel miniatures inside and the miniatures themselves. The Lord Imperitant, five Vindictors, three Praetors on the Stormcast Eternal side, and a Swamp Call of Shaman and Popgrat, ten Hobgrat Slitters, and ten Gut Grippers on the Cruel Boys side. Alright, so we know exactly what's in it. It has 32 beautiful miniatures, but if you do not want to use those miniatures, you're just adding them to your collection or you're sharing them with a buddy, um, and you want to use your own miniatures to uh, start playing Age of Sigmar, for example, I tried out the five tutorial battle plans within this book using Sylvaneth and Soulblight Gravelords, and it worked perfectly. It still teaches you how to play and you can use whatever models that you want. However, I do suggest, as a beginner, starting off with your basic troop choice and a wizard or priest or hero as your starting point to learning how to play Age of Sigmar. Just a ten-man group of troops, whichever ones you fancy the most, um, and also a hero that you like. But if you are using your own models, make certain that you either have the battle tool or access to the war scroll at least so that uh, you can play with nothing else. Everything else is already in the box, but you will need your war scroll. Eventually you will also need the battle tome anyway, so if you are able to go and get that, that would be the best starting point. But if you do not have access to your battle tome for your army yet, then you're going to want to find your war scroll. You can either do that by uh, most of the kits now have a war scroll right in the assembly guide. So look for something that looks like this. That would be your war scroll. Uh, however, you can also go onto the Games Workshop website and uh, find the model that you were, uh, the model box, the model specifically, uh, go down to the download section at the bottom of its page and find the little PDF of the War Scroll. Perfect, works, looks, should look much the same as this does. The other option is to uh, check out the Warhammer Age of Sigmar app on a any device I'm pretty sure it's compatible with and pull it up there. Um, either way, you're looking for something that tells you the movement, the wounds, the saves, the bravery, the weapons, and the abilities that the models have, as well as their keywords. Okay, once you got your war scroll and your models assembled, the most that you'll need to learn how to play Age of Sigmar with the Extremist set is a 10-man group of your infantry, your basic unit. Basically, if it was in the start collecting of your army, that's your basic troop that I'm talking about, but even if you are not, uh, grabbing your models from there. What you really want to get started, just to not complicate things, is a model that has two wounds or less. 
that is in a group of multiple models of two or less. For example, your vindictors are in a group of five. Most things that have um, have uh, wounds of t uh, of one are in groups of ten. So a ten man group is pretty easy to come by. The next thing you're going to want is a hero. Generally, a hero between five to seven wounds would be the starting point for this. Of course, you can go even higher, but the, as you get higher in wound count for your hero and your wizard, um, they're just going to obliterate everything else on the battlefield. So if that's how you want to learn how to play, no problem. But it might be nice to have another model like this big to play along with your troops so uh, so that you can play once they hit uh, tutorial number four and five is when you're going to start using your heroes uh, and most likely a wizard or a priest either or if your army does not have uh, wizards or priests are there any now that don't have wizards or priests anymore why not then just grab a hero well, anyone that you like eventually they'll become useful or you can, you know, turn it into something else. All right, so very specifically now, if you're uncertain when you get to battle plan number one, as you can see, battle plan number one uses three models all together. That's one on one person's side and two on the other person's. The person here only has one model because it's two wounds, but these two, are only one wound each, so you're two wounds all together. That's what you're looking for. On both sides, players have to have two wounds all together, either in one model or in two models. And you probably play this a couple times where one person's in the middle and the other person is on the outside and then vice versa. This one teaches you the charge phase and the combat phase. And that's it, and you're done. You go on to battle plan number which is teaching you already how to use terrain, how to um, avoid guys. They see these guys are hiding from these guys who are trying to charge in, but the terrain is in the way. They can't charge in. They have to get go around. Terrain is affecting their game right away, so you're learning about it right away. This allows you to uh, learn about moving. That does not. That is not the same as charging. And battle shock. As you get into bigger units of models, more than one or two, uh, you may have to face morale as you're losing your comrades. And that's what Battleshock is about. So having at least five, four or five models on the battlefield will help you learn how to handle that. Unless you're death, in which case you don't really lose morale ever. So I guess you're lucky. But you should still learn how to make your opponents lose their models through morale. All right, battle plan number three is aim and fire. And it's really just 10 wounds or 10 guys versus 10 wounds or five guys. And it doesn't matter if you have models that don't have missile weapons. For this battle plan only, they give you missile weapons so that you can learn how to shoot. That's what this one is all about shooting and how that can affect your play and when you can do it, who you can do it to, and so on. The fourth battle plan is about magic. That's where you want your wizard to come in. It's also about the hero phase. Uh, the hero phase is m more than just for wizards, but here is where we talk about it. Now, if you don't have a wizard and you have a priest instead, um, instead of where it talks about spell casting, just choose the prayers instead of the spells. So here it's teaching you how to do Mystic Shield and Arcane Bolt for a wizard. Uh, just instead of Mystic Shield and Arcane Bolt, just check out the two prayers here that everyone has. Uh, bless and Smite. Same sort of thing. Just um, input priest wherever it says wizard and you'll learn exactly the same way. If you do not have a wizard, well, then I guess it's for your opponent. And you still have to find out what <laughs> what wizards can do because you're going to have to be prepared for them. And lastly, 
we've got Hallowed Ground, which is the last tutorial of this book. And you're going to use all your models. In this case, they use all the models in the Extremist kit. But for you, um, I'd suggest you use your whole 10 man and your hero. And then if you're um, eager to involve someone else by then, you just add anyone else. What you just want to make certain uh, is that your points level at this point is the same on either side. Um, somewhere in your battle tome, there will be something called uh, pitch battle profiles or pitch profiles towards the end of the book. It'll tell you how many points your models are. Make certain that both sides are even at this point, if at all possible, because then you'll have a pretty even game. And you're now going to be learning about objectives, which are a very important aspect of games um, Age of Sigmar. And you're going to learn about the command abilities and heroic actions that your models can do. One of your models you may have uncovered by this time is special. He either has extra attacks or a plus one to hit, something like that. He's called your champion. He can give uh, commands to the rest of your guys, make them a bit better. Um, and so can your general, whichever one person you chose in your uh, group to be your general, and so can all of your heroes. So that's what this last one is about. And that really is all you needed to start uh, learning how to play Age of Sigmar. Very basic. Um, I've played through all of the missions. They work well to teach you how to do it. Um, I'm quite satisfied. I'm also really satisfied with this little reference card because you've got your heroic actions, which you're going to have to choose every single turn once you learn how to use them. You've got your, your easy peasy spells. And you got all the command abilities that um, that are universal to everyone. Um, since you're going to be gaining a lot of command points every turn, uh, these are not something you want to forget about. They can really change the game for you. Or if you're really unlucky, do nothing. But they have a possibility of changing the game. You can't forget them, and it's really nice that there's two reference sheets, one for each person. I am quite satisfied with the extremist starter set. As a starter set, the terrain is beautiful, the models are lovely, not necessarily lovely to put together. Ah, one last tip. One last tip is when you're assembling these push fit models, as I generally say in all my videos have to do with push fit models, uh, the pegs that fit the two pieces together, uh, you're going to want to cut them down into sticks instead of pegs just to fit them together. A little tip to save you some grief. Thanks for watching. I hope that was useful to you. I will be doing videos on the other starter sets as they come out. Uh, Games Workshop gave this to me early, but I will be doing the other ones when I have acquired them uh, by the usual route. If you have any questions or concerns, comments, um, smiley faces, Put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye. I was meant for playing with miniatures. Were you meant for playing them too? Thanks, guys.